Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Everything is Bad Newfangled Motion Picture Show. What are we doing, Nolan? We are reviewing Suburbicon. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the Everything is Bad Newfangled Motion Picture Show. I am Niall. And I am Nolan. And we will be following our standard procedure, um, which is where we'll review a movie, spoiler free, give you a warning, and then we'll go more in depth into it after that. Yeah. Because, man, there is some stuff to go more in depth yeah, into I on think, this movie. I think our review is going to be fairly short because there's not much we can go into without really spoiling it. Yep. But I, I enjoyed the movie, but... I think, because it's only getting, like, middling reviews, I think. Yeah. I think the problem with it is it's a much different movie than the trailer portrays it. Yep. We can't really get into that without spoiling it. Right, but I went into this movie, um, based on the trailer, it looks like a revenge story, but a dark comedy at the same time, which it is a dark comedy. Mm -hmm. Um, More dark than comedy, I would say. Yeah. But it is a dark comedy, and um, it looked like some sort of revenge story. Um, and I just gotta say, it's that's not that movie. It's not. It's still a good movie. And if you... It, it is very blatantly a Coen Brothers movie. Yeah. Um, they're not really getting uh, the credit. Like, their name isn't, like, thrown out there as being attached to it, but they did write the movie. Mm-hmm. And George Clooney directed it. He also was one of the writers. Yeah. But yeah, the Coen brothers um, were are the two are the top two build for the writing credits, uh, and it it comes across in the movie. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Just know that that's what it is. I mean, you you go into it expecting a certain kind of movie, a certain kind of story and feel, and from Coen brothers, and you you get that. Yeah, and then but yeah, I think um, really the reason why it's the reason I feel I haven't read any reviews on it, but I'm guessing that the reason why it's not getting great reviews is people are expecting one thing and not getting it. Right. Uh, and that upsets people. That's happened with a pl- plenty of movies in the past. Uh, I think we even reviewed one ourselves. But I don't remember what it was. Uh, where you just not get you just don't get the movie that you expect walking into it, and that upsets some people. Yep. And um, that's that's how this is. But it's still a it's still a decent movie. I like the um, the uh, um, the period piece element. I, I like period pieces anyway. But the uh, yeah the Americana of the late nineteen fifties is very blatant in it. Um, yeah, and it. Um... Yeah, it, it was an enjoyable movie. Um, I mean, all the all the acting in it was good. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'd say the um, the 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 kid, his friend, the neighbor, yeah, boy, his acting was pretty stiff. Uh, but it was a very minor role. Yeah, he wasn't really in the movie Although, all that much. I mean, to be fair, like kids that age, I mean, the the two times when he really like gave like stiff deliveries when he was at first met the kid yeah and then later on it also makes sense because it's another awkward situation right at the end it's another awkward situation yeah so i mean i could forgive it on some level um so it doesn't feel like out of place necessarily it was probably it's stiffer than it should be but yeah i think the um the, the kid who played matt damon's son uh, he was a better yeah. gave a better performance. Yeah, he's only, he, only he about was, ten years old. I think. Yeah, and he was in the movie quite a bit. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's there's the I mean the movie takes place in Suburbicon, which is a city of like sixty thousand people. Yeah, it's a suburb. They're never specific as to where it is in the United States, but it's right. But this it's, idyllic suburban it's like community. It's a master plan community. It has yeah. its own like police and fire department and shopping centers and stuff. So you never have to leave the community, right? Um, which uh, it it's sort of like the trailer gives a sort of a Stepford Wives kind of vibe, right? That's what I was trying to think of. Yeah, uh, it's not quite that. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> um, but again, that's something that people are expecting and they're not getting. Uh, so, 
I don't know how much more we can say with, about it without spoiling it. Um, I did enjoy the movie, though. Yeah, it was an enjoyable movie. Um, there, as with a lot of dark comedies, there's a lot of the humor isn't just the ridiculousness of the situation. Yeah. Um, and I mean, if you've seen like other Coen Brothers movies in particular, you know what I mean. Like it's funny because the not because any like real joke was said just because the situation that is happening is just so absurd you can't help but laugh at it right and there were a few of those especially this one scene involving a bicycle which is in the trailer yeah it's in the trailer matt damon's like seen riding this child's bike and he's trying to pedal and his like legs are too long and his knees are sticking out to the side yeah chicken winging out yeah yeah so um yeah so we'll call it here i guess for the spoiler warning yep Right, right here, we're drawing our line. And I dare oh, you to cross right that line. Right here, no further. All right. Um. So, man, there was. It was. This was not a revenge story. No, not at all. <laughs> See, here's what I was expecting based on the trailer, and it's probably yours is probably similar. So, these uh, men kill uh matt damon's wife because there's a scene in this trailer where he's sitting there and he says talking to his son and he's like these men took you know killed our killed your mother and we're not gonna let that stand and all this stuff and i figured like he's going out and getting his revenge and killing them and that that was his plan was to kill them um and that was that was the story you know and uh up until a certain point, I was still expecting that because there's a scene where they bring those guys in for a police lineup, and he says, "No, they're these aren't them." And I figured, "Oh, he's letting them go because he wants his revenge himself. He wants to go and kill them himself." No, he paid those men to kill his wife, so he can he and his wife's sister can be together, and they can collect the insurance money <clears throat> and run off to Aruba together. Yeah. And so it's it's mentioned that um, it's it's heavily implied that um, there was so there's a car accident before the events of the movie that paralyzed his wife, and you know it's heavily implied that um, you know he he caused the he accident. caused the accident and stuff. But then you find out later from the police detective that he owed a lot of money to the mob. And the mob guy, the collector, died in a car accident. Uh huh. You know, a month before the events of the movie. So, it's sort of implied that, you know, he killed that guy. With his car. With his car. And his wife is just collateral damage. Right. Uh, both his wife and her sister were played by Julianne Moore in this. Yep. And then it was it got really creepy um, before we realized that they were um, having an affair when she went and had her hair done to look like her sister's. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, she's trying to replace her sister. This is getting really creepy. Then I'm like, I'm oh like, wait, that's no, gonna, that's gonna mess with that kid's head. Which it did. Yeah, it did. I mean, it did anyway. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um. There's another element to this movie that was unexpected. The racial element. The racial, the racial protests going on. So there. There was this side story, almost in in the movie as much as the main plot, but didn't really go anywhere. And it didn't even need to be there. It was kind of filler. Well, it was a red herring. Yeah. Because at the, so at the beginning, the mailman's walking down the street. He's like delivering mail to this house. He said, "So have you met your new neighbor?" And the guy just has like this like. Andy Griffith, like, I'm just super happy to be a mailman, sort of. Yeah, the only guy with a better job than me is the good humor man. Right. (laughs) And he's like, have you met your new neighbor? And and she's like, oh, no, we haven't, but I'm making them a custard. He's like, oh, isn't that great? Goes down the street, he walks up, and and he's, there's a black family moving in. He walks up to the the mother in his family, the wife, and he assumes she's the help. I assume she's the help, yeah, or something. Because he asks if Mrs. So and So is home, and she goes, "I'm Mrs. So and So," and he's like, "Uh, uh huh." 
Yeah, and so the whole town is upset that uh, a black family moved in, yep. and they start protesting. Remember, this is the 50s. Yeah, 1959, I think. And, you know, people are protesting, and the the neighbors are, like, building fences. Like, everyone has, like, just, like, a corral fence. You know, it's basically, like, a post. And it's, like, like posts and timber, you know, waist-high. That's everyone's fence, you know. There's no crime. There's no need to keep your neighbors out. Everyone's friendly. They talk over the fence all the time. Then their neighbors are building these right. eight foot fences, right? Around, so, so they don't have to look the, at the black family. The day the family's moving in, though, um, Julianne Moore's one of her characters, um, the aunt, the aunt, tells the kid, Matt Damon's son, to go say hi, play baseball with the new kid, right? Yeah, she's so, apparently the only one in town who's, like, not racist. Yeah, so... Because, like, because there's a scene, because she's the, the, um, works to register at the grocery store. Yeah. And the manager is doesn't want the black woman shopping there, so he's telling her everything is $20. And you can tell, like, how uncomfortable Julianne Moore is, and she's got this look on her face, like, I'm so sorry. Right. You know, but she ha- her manager standing or the owner of the store is just standing right there and she's like I I can't do anything about this. Right. So you know, the kid goes and plays baseball and like the the two kids walk down the street and everyone in town, all these good old boys and their Ford pickups are sitting there and watch these watch the kids walk down the street. And then that night these thugs break in, kill um the kid's mom. Uh, and you know, but you're, you're kind of at first we were led to believe we well, right, and, I don't and, know if we're led to believe, but we kind of thought that and, well, because the way it's cut, it's cutting between a bunch of people being all angry and protesting outside of a house, and they all look the same mm-hmm. because it's a suburban neighborhood, and everyone's been watching these two kids play together, right? And, and so it and it just keeps cutting to outside a house with all these people yelling at uh, about or. Uh, yeah, they were all, you know, yelling or what, protesting or whatever. And Well, the, the first night all they were doing is standing there with their cars radios on really loud. Yeah. Uh, so you could, like, hear the, the radio uh, inside the house. But, um, yeah, and so it cuts to inside the kid's room and his dad comes in and says there's some men here. And uh, you think, like, okay, um, they're there to punish them for associating with the black people. Uh, but that wasn't that at all. That wasn't it at all. Right. But at first, it seems like that was. Yeah, it, it seemed like that. That's what I thought was going on. Um, but it wasn't because I mean, like I said, there the people out there with their radios really loud. Then it cuts inside the kid's bedroom, and you could clearly hear the radios. But you got to remember that they are neighbors. Their houses butt up against the backs. Yeah. Of their houses butt up against each other. Right. Um. But yeah, it was these two guys that yeah Matt Damon hired them to kill his wife, and then so they could collect the insurance money. And these guys were supposed to get a cut of that money, I think, because they were promised they they hadn't been paid, and so since they hadn't been paid, they keep coming back to harass Matt Damon, uh, because he hasn't paid them. Yep, and um, Oscar Isaac's in the movie. Yeah, I'd forgot. I knew he was in it. Uh, but I've forgotten about it until he showed up, and he's the insurance uh, adjuster. Yeah, he's the, he's the one who shows up and basically catches on that this is fraud. Right. And he he's real slick about it. He's real <laughs> slick about it. He's you know, and he he basically threatens to tell the cops unless he gets all of the insurance claim money. And yep. I mean, his him showing up is sort of when. Everything starts falling apart for Julianne Moore and Matt Damon. Right. In the meantime, it keeps cutting back, though, to all these people. The protest outside the black people's house, the black family, um, is... It's funny, like, the the husband has, like, one line in the whole movie, and it's, like, hide under the bed or something when those protesters start, like, breaking the windows. Yeah. Um, That's his only line in the movie, as far as I recall. Uh, his the mother has 
more lines. Anyway, um, it just keeps growing. It just progressively, like, every night, there's more and more people and more and more violent. And, well, yeah, and, like, being... I mean, at first, they're just being really obnoxious. Like, they have the radios on, then they're singing. Then they're, like, beating drums outside their house all day and night. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and it, keeps, it keeps showing this, but that thing... Other than, like, when they start breaking windows, if that doesn't go anywhere. So the only further point that it seems to have... The only, like, further bearing it seems to have on the plot, the main plot of the movie, is it's an excuse for the fire trucks to be driving through town, and the one that kills the the guy in the, the beetle... Who's one of the thugs. Who's that, one of the thugs that Matt Damon had hired. Yeah. A fire truck hits his car and kills him. And so that's an excuse for the fire truck to be there because it's racing because they've started fires. Uh, they they lit the the family's uh, car on fire and they're throwing, you know, Molotov cocktails and stuff. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and so basically the only <laughs> that's the only like further All purpose that, as to the plot. Oscar Isaac can keep threatening, keep threatening. Like, there's six cops right over there. I could go tell any one of them. Yeah. It was kind of funny, like, when he comes in their house, like, man, look at all those people. You think we were in Mississippi? Yeah. Um, See, so yeah, I mean, it, it was a good movie. I was entertained through the whole... Um, hour and 45 minutes. Hour and like 45, that. is that what it is? I think something like that. Um, hour and 44, yeah, according to IMDb. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I was, I was entertained through the whole of that movie. At no point was... I was I bored or anything and it, mm. it just was not at all what I expected it to be. Yeah. De- definitely not. And you know, I could see where George Clooney and the Coen brothers would be the type to like purposely try to mislead the audience going into it. Well, I don't know how much like you could show in the trailer without if you were gave like had made a trailer they gave a true accounting of like what the story is about. You would, you would reveal a lot. I yeah. think it would be too spoiler filled. Yeah, and you would just that. you would basically. I mean, you you'd wind up like revealing basically the whole plot. Um, yeah, I could see that. That makes sense. I remember seeing this one movie. Um, I think it was called like What Lies Beneath or something. It had Harrison Ford in it, and the trailer literally gave the entire plot of the movie away. And it was supposed to be this like thriller murder mystery. And the trailer literally gave the ending away. <laughs> um, and I, I don't remember why I even went to see that. I think Matt wanted to see it, and I went with him. I, I don't. Know. I don't this remember. Was, it was if, if Matt was involved. This was like more than a decade. Yeah, yeah, ago. yeah. It was. It was a long time ago. Um, but I just I remember that. So yeah, I, I I've seen how trailers can go horribly wrong. And, uh, yeah, I think that you run the risk, because of the nature of this story, you run the risk of revealing too much in the trailer. Yeah. And if they'd have, if they'd have revealed the thing with the, like, racial protests, it would have... It would have made the movie look totally different. It would have made the movie look totally different in, in a different way. Here, here's the funny thing. This, this movie had more racism in it than the movie about Thurgood Marshall did. Marshall? Yeah. Because last week we saw Marshall, and there was comparatively very little racism. Comparatively. Comparatively. Yeah. I mean... A movie about, <laughs> about the NAACP in the 1940s has comparatively little racism... To this. To this. Yeah. Because yeah. there was a lot of blatant racism in this movie. Right. I mean, it's all, it's all a bunch of good old boys. We don't even know what part of con- the country this was in. We have no idea, other than it probably not Mississippi, judging by uh, Oscar Isaac's comment of it. You'd think we were in Mississippi. Yeah. So we can rule out one state. <laughs> uh, we could ru- probably rule out a couple more. Not Hawaii, not Alaska. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But, yeah, we don't see anything outside of the suburban town, so we don't know what kind of, like... <clears throat> You know what kind of climate or you know geography there is. Yeah. So, you know, what I think got a raw deal of this movie though. Huh. It's the uncle. Yeah, he was the 
best person in the movie. Yeah, he was like the only person other than the kids in the black family. Like he's the only one that gets any real screen time that isn't a douchebag. Yeah, at first you kind of like, oh, this guy's a is kind of he's he's that obnoxious sort of uncle where like you love him but it's like dude take it down a notch yeah um but he clearly loves his nephew a lot right and he's throughout the whole movie he's his only concern is what's best for the kid and he's looking out for the kid a lot and he dies to save the kid Mm mm-hmm uh and i thought like what was going to happen in the end was you know, Matt Damon was gonna die, and the uncle until you know his uncle died, and we showed we see he has the knife stuck in his back. I thought maybe the kid was gonna go live with his uncle or something. Yeah. Uh, for a minute, and then like, oh no, he's dying. And then I don't know what happened to this kid. He walks out of his house, and there's four dead bodies in it, and he just goes and plays catch with the neighbor kid. Like what? <laughs> he doesn't even call the cops or anything. Be like, yeah, uh, I don't know. My dad went crazy and killed these people, or whatever story he comes up with. But how long do they stay there before like someone comes a knocking and be like, hey, your house is kind of stinky? <laughs> What's or going on? or like, hey, kid, I'm your dad's boss. Your dad hasn't shown up for work in a week. Or the nosy neighbors, because you know everyone in that town's a nosy neighbor. Like, hey, I haven't seen your dad or your aunt in a while. What's going on? Yeah, your dad or your aunt who is uncomfortably close in appearance to your mom now. To your dead mom. Yeah. Um, but yeah, final verdict, go see this movie. Um, judging by the number of people that were in our theater and the reviews it's getting, I don't think it's going to make a whole lot of money. No. It should. Yeah. Because it's, it's a well-written, well-thought-out movie. Yep. Um... But it yeah, yeah, just be warned. It's uh, it's not. Well, I mean, it, we've already explained that we we've, we've yeah, gone over the whole plot now. Uh, it's just not what it looks like going yeah. in. So, okay. So, uh, next, what's next week? Um, next week is Thor. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then the week after that is Murder on the Orient Express, which every time I see the trailer for that, first of all, that's just. All the trailers for that movie have been excellently done. Um, but every time I see the trailer, like I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I'm kind of tired of seeing the Star Wars trailers at this point. Well, I wish they would show the new Star Wars trailer because there's a new one and they've been showing the old one in the theaters. That's true. Either way, I'm kind of tired of them. I've seen them both a ton already. Um, I've only seen the new one a couple times. Yeah, and like, I'm. Tired of seeing the Thor trailer so much, but I'm not tired of that of the trailer for Murder on the Orient Express. It just looks like a really good movie. Uh, and then, but yeah. So next week is uh, Thor Ragnarok. Then does one of the trailers that use the uh, immigrant song? Yes, it does. The first one did. Yeah, that's right. Um, because you know it's you know Norse themed. Right. No, I get it. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yeah, so we'll review that next week. Um, we'll probably have a lot more we can say about that before the spoiler warning, because there's typically very little to spoil in the Marvel movies. Yeah. They're pretty straightforward. It's, here's the bad guy, here's the good guys. After about a quarter of the movie, the good guys figure out what's going on, and the rest of the movie is them fighting bad guys. Yeah. It's more or less the plot. Of most of the most of the of the Marvel superhero movies have pretty much all been that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that'll be next week. Uh, otherwise, we're streaming over on the Twitch under uh, everything underscore is underscore bad. We played Bendy and the Ink Machine last week, and part one we part one, and we let out some manly battle cries and did not scream. Not at, at all. all. So um, I guess I'm playing part two yeah probably this week most likely assuming you can pry me off the computer long from playing wolfenstein long enough oh yeah so that's also this week right i don't know is that today i think it's today i don't know anyway it's not a tuesday what's it doing coming out today 
Uh, I don't know. But anyway, so streaming over on there. Uh, we were playing Benny and the Ink Machine because it's Halloween season, and that game is spoopy as hell. So yep. check that out. Um, otherwise, until next time, thanks for listening. Toodaloo. Bye-bye.